It's Cannes Yachting Festival, and this year I'm trying to show you some of the yachts that really stand out to me. Some for design, some for technical areas, and as far as things standing out go, this has to take the biscuit. This is a SARP, it's called the SARP Edge. And apart from the colour, which is pretty striking I have to say, this kind of orangey reddy colour, which apparently is a, a colour that Porsche use, um, there's some incredible design features, incredible technical features. Actually, when the shipyard representative showed me the engine room, I immediately thought of the viewers of the YouTube channel. You're going to love it. It's an engine room like I've never seen before. I'm totally convinced it's an engine room you've never seen before because it's an engine room that's never been done before. So join me on board. I'll show you a little bit about the layout of this yacht. Starting with this. I would call this a transformer. I think the Italians call it a transformer. It basically, it folds back down to make a flush platform here that you can put a tender on. And then it lifts up, as you can see, so you've got access to the, to the dock, or you can use it to launch your tender. You can use it as a diving board. It'll actually go all the way into the water, so you can use it as a swim ladder, a very comfortable swim ladder as well. So it's a great, flexible addition to the yacht. Um, that gives it a little bit of character. Up here, you can fit two jet skis, and then you have this davit here for the jet skis. And then you have this extra level, a little bit higher up for dining, where you've got some lovely shade, a great view all the way around. Now, the shipyard representative who showed me around was really saying that this is a yacht designed for young people who like sporty, dynamic things. They won't say no, of course, to an older person who buys it, but they're imagining that younger people will, uh, will really appreciate the design features. Take a look at this. This is um, the hand railing, which traditionally is stainless steel. In fact, you can see the boat next to us is a beautiful stainless steel hand railing. Here, it's exposed carbon fiber, and it does look really sexy, especially this black carbon fiber uh, with that bright orange hull. Um, I know I did say to you, Yarrick, that we'd go inside, but I think we'll look at the bow first. So if you follow me down the... Uh, down the deck. And this is a cool feature, because apart from the fact that you've got this lovely seating area here, you've got fittings to be able to put some carbon fiber poles here so you have a sun awning as well. I love the fact that they've integrated these glass panels into the bulwarks, because it is kind of nice to be able to just see the rippling of the water and have greater visibility uh, from this particular angle. The bridge is right here. We'll be looking at the bridge later. But this is very much a yacht that will sell on its design features. And, and they were telling me that this bridge was designed to kind of replicate the goggles of the early explorers. Do you remember the explorers would go to the Antarctic and they have those goggles on? That was the idea with this particular part of the design. Um, but, and actually, as we look around, you'll see there are some very, very cool design features on the yacht that I've certainly never seen before. Let's go back down this deck so that we can enter the yacht as an owner would do, which is right into the main, the main lounge area. And I think as well as we walk down this deck, you'll appreciate the curves and the design features of the side deck. By the way, it's an 85 foot long yacht. And as you can see, nice wide side decks, easy to walk down. And here we're in the main saloon which is actually pretty big for an 85 foot yacht. I mean, apart from the decor, which is very much to my taste, but that is a question of taste. You can see this video here, they're showing you what the yacht looks like underway in navigation. So that's worth, uh, worth showing to you. But what I particularly wanted to show you is a little bit about the shipyard itself, because to date, this by the way, Hello, old friend David. Yeah, works for a brokerage company that uh, remain, I can't say what it nameless. is, but it, it, it <laughs> rhymes with Hennison. And they have their camera crew on board as, uh, at the moment as well. Three times as many cameramen, three times as much equipment, and one third of the views. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> now, um, previously, Sarp yachts have delivered this, I mean, not the model. The actual yacht. This is, I think, if I remember correctly, a 46 meter called La Passion. 
I remember when they debuted at the Can Yacht Show a few years ago with this and um, it really had a big impact because the quality was exceptional. For, some, for a shipyard that had not really delivered on anything before, for their first offering, this just couldn't be criticised. It was a wonderful, wonderful yacht. I, I'm pretty sure that this larger yacht is in construction at the shipyard and here you have a model of the yacht that we're actually on at the moment. So it's an exciting builder and well worth paying attention to. As you can see here, we have a bar area. This panel here lowers down and gives you direct access to the galley. Let's take a look at the galley, actually. It's pretty easy to get into. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's a good functional space, good high-end melee equipment. That's going to really upset Aquaholic because he doesn't like to pronounce melee in that particular way and he's probably right. Here you can see the serving area and this panel. I'm not actually sure how to lower that so I won't even try any more switches but it was shown to me earlier how that lowers down. It's great because then you've got those bar stools just on the end, just on the other side of that panel. Going through to the bridge You can see again the, the idea of the uh, Explorer's goggles around us. And this is just a nice functional bridge. You're right up here by the bow. You've got fantastic visibility. You've got all of your equipment here all around you. From the captain's perspective, it's all very, very functional and easily accessible. Um, moving on, I really want to show you the guest quarters. That's all right. And moving forward here, we have the, uh, the VIP stateroom. You can actually see that we're kind of getting into the bow of the yacht here where the, uh, the yacht becomes a little bit more narrow, but nonetheless, really good space, uh, open space. You've got a little vanity unit here, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, and they've chosen to go with uh, the open bathroom. I mean, obviously the actual WC has a door that closes on it, but we've got a lovely open sink open shower unit. The representative of the shipyard again uh, made the point that this is imagined that it's for, for younger people, younger yacht owners, they'll really appreciate this layout. It is very modern and, and very young, very beautiful decor. There's a lot of design features as well in the ceiling which I really appreciate, these curves. The quality of the finishing is excellent. This is something that actually you'll see a lot of uh, particularly yacht brokers uh, do who've um, who see a lot of yachts. One of the, the things to look for is ceiling panels. The, the lesser quality building builders, they never line up. They're often falling down a little bit. Not the case here. This is really impeccable, actually, the way that they built it. But have a look at this. I don't know if you can get this on film, Yarrick, but this whole staircase, which goes right up to the sun deck, is designed to be like the tree of life. So not only do you have these leaves here, but you also have that branch effect going up. I personally think if you're going to spend five million or more on a yacht, you, you have to like the look of it. You have to look at it and go, look at my yacht and feel a little bit excited about what you've, what you've just spent your money on. And this for me, this does it for me. I just think that's a beautiful design. I'd look at that. I'd feel proud to own a yacht like this. Moving through here, they've opted for this lower deck lounge area and this is kind of cool actually because if you've got young children and they want to play on the playstation or something in the evenings when you're no longer out at sea but you want to be upstairs watching the television the kids can sit down here they've got their little den they play on the playstation um, they're enjoying themselves you're enjoying conversation and television upstairs uh, or dinner drinks whatever it just adds a bit of flexibility to the layout now, of course, if you buy one of these, you don't have to have this. You could put a little gym area in here. I'm quite sure that you could make it into a cabin area. It has its own ensuite bathroom, so it would be a very easy thing to do. Through here, we have another cabin with two single beds and also what's called a Pullman bunk. So this area here actually can lower down to be an extra bunk. Um, I remember back in the day when I was first getting into yachting, people used to complain all the time about how small the television sets were in the cabins, but I don't think there'd be any complaints at all with the size of that television set. 
or with the size of the ensuite bathroom, because that's really quite impressive. And I must admit, it's only now, Yarrick, that I'm looking at it that I realize what a, what a good size that is. Lovely big shower area. It's just a beautifully designed boat. Here too, this is the master stateroom and it's got all of that wow factor and impact that you'd want from a yacht that you spend a considerable amount of money buying. Um, again, we've got the open bathroom area, lovely big shower uh, there. Um, behind you, Yarrick, if I can get you just to come around here, we'll do a little dance here. And again, you've got this beautiful uh, vanity unit here. This seems to be a marble or a granite. I think it's a marble finish on the top. So it's very high end, very beautiful um, design. I, I just love the way that they've integrated the color of the marble in with the color of the decor uh, in the yacht. Again, it's a yacht that really sells on its design features and its quality too. Worth mentioning from a technical perspective that the um, the hull has been designed by um, a company that's actually quite famous in the yachting industry. It's owned by Perry Van Usanen, and uh, he has a, a company called Van Usanen, who specialize in hull design, but they specialize in optimizing hull design. And they've come up with um, a design that they call the fast displacement hull. That means that the hull of the yacht won't actually lift up out of the water like a planing hull does. Um, so it cuts through the water, um, but obviously there's lots of little tweaking that you can do with the hull to make it faster or slower. And what they've done is they've absolutely optimized their hull design so it is the fastest possible hull with it still being a displacement hull. Um, that's a really important feature, not just for speed, but also for economy, because of course the more efficient your hull is, um, the better range you'll have and uh, the fuel burn will also be reduced uh, because of the optimization of the hull. We're going to be looking at the engine room later, which will absolutely, it put a big smile on my face, let's say that. But before we look at the engine room, let's look at the sun deck. We're walking up that tree of life stairwell to the sun deck. Now, anybody who's watching this, who's owned the yacht, who's been on yachts, will know that uh, every yacht is a compromise. Either you want speed uh, or you want range. Uh, and so this is maybe not the widest sun deck I've ever seen, but it's acceptable. And by having a slightly narrower 85 foot yacht, you get better speed, better range, better economy. Um, the price on this, I think, is a very sensible sort of price. Um, and they've packed in a lot here. I mean, I love, love, love this helm station. It's so modern, it's so futuristic. Um, it would be a lot of fun for an owner operator to, to be cruising with this yacht. And you've still got all of the comfort. Lovely seating area underneath this hard top. The hard top opens if you want the sun, it closes if you want the shade. A wonderful bar here with three bar stools. This is a new model of yacht, new to the market. The debut is here at the Cannes Yachting, uh, Yachting Festival. I think this is going to put SARP yachts on the map um, in a big, big way. I can see them really doing well with this series of yachts and introducing a lot more people to their brand. At the end of the day, people want to see something a little bit different, and this certainly is different. But we haven't seen the most different thing yet. To see that, let's take a look at the engine room. This is the engine room. The design has been inspired by Star Trek and by science fiction. And I loved the description that the shipyard representative gave to me when he was showing me around here. He quite rightly said, he said, engine rooms are so boring and they all look so very similar. And yet crew often will spend a lot of time in the engine room. Even a, a crew member who's really into his engines and into his engineering, it's not much fun to be in the engine room all day and they wanted to make it fun, make it fun for the crew, fun for the owner to show his friends as well. So this, for example, is the fuel tank. And as the representative correctly said, fuel, of course, gives energy to the yacht. So they wanted to make it look like the, uh, the warp engines 
of the Starship Enterprise, or, or maybe what it made me think of is the energy plaque that Iron Man has on his chest. They made the logo of Sarp here look like a, a superhero logo. And actually, all the trimmings all the way around the engine room are in keeping with this science fiction theme. And you know what? Why not? It's a beautiful engine room. It's well appointed. It's easy to work on. It's a serious engine room in the sense that it has everything you need beautifully labeled, beautifully laid out. But why not have a bit of fun with it as well? And this is the most fun engine room far and away I've ever seen on a yacht. I think this is a tribute to Saar for coming out with something totally different. That fast displacement hull on an 85 foot yacht, the colors, the carbon fiber, the idea of having the forward viewing bridge in that Explorer goggle, the Tree of Life stairs. It's a really, really cool yacht that I would encourage you if you're in the market for this kind of a yacht to take a very serious look at because beyond the design features and beyond the fun aspect, it's also very nicely put together indeed. Now, it was very kind of uh, Hennison to, to let us film while they're filming as well on board. So I think we need to get out of their way right now. So the only last thing that I can possibly say to you is beam me up, Scotty.